and welcome back to the book and life podcast today we're going to have a brand new book guest on whether they're an author an editor a producer you'll never quite know so you're in for one hell of a ride but today i just have to uh do the adverts and then i'll get us straight into that most important conversation and as as we do every week um i'm going to read the shadow which is part of the Time Guardian series, and this is book four from Marianne Curley. The battle is over, the war is won. A prophecy complete, but life can't just pick up where it left off for even, struggling to cope with tragic loss, at odds with friends in the guard. He finds himself adrift, jumping in shadows and sensing someone who can't possibly be there. Blaming herself for the goddess Athena's death, Giselle swears revenge to fullify the immortal's plan for world domination, but Giselle hadn't planned on love, and that leaves her with an unbearable choice. Should she follow her heart or the strings of a goddess short on praise but high on expectation, who continues to pull her from the grave? As the guard and the order battles through the past and into an impossible future, darkness looks round every corner. The fight for the world's survival rests with just one. Is it friend or foe who stands in the shadow? And just a reminder that The Price of Freedom by Rosemary Aiken, sorry, Rosemary Rowan, um, is being donated to the Ukraine refugee crisis. And here's the blurb for her book. It's uh, one of her... Roman British crime series, which was written under her maiden name. All editions can be found online where all books are sold, even her agents donating her commission. Sorry, I don't have the blurb for that, but uh, that's that's what she's doing. And now, without further ado, let's get you to the guests. And welcome back to the Book and Life podcast, guys. This week we have an incredible writer coming in today. She is going to whip you guys up into a frenzy and leave you wanting more. But before I get into that, uh, I'm going to welcome her and I'm going to get her to tell you about her new book because I know I'm excited. So without further ado, everyone, please welcome Celine Goldenberg. Did I get that right? It's Salony or Sal, whichever is easy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I always bugger it up, like, every single time, so, yeah, even yeah. people get my name wrong, so it's like, mm. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about the, your new book, your latest book that you're, you're plugging right now. Sure, Um. so it's called The Last Fee Hunter, it's coming out April 9th on Angry Robot, it is a dark fantasy, um, inspired by Thai folklore and culture, It follows a young, ambitious hunter named X, who is on his way to hunt a a legendary demon when he gets interrupted by a pregnant runaway who asks for his help. So it turns out she has a lot of secrets, and things get more and more dangerous, stuff that he's not prepared for, and also starting to catch feelings so um that is the gist of it i love that because it's kind of like this whole the poor guy has no clue what he's getting himself into and that oops blindsided again like yeah i really liked having this kind of i think my agent described it as a a cinnamon roll character where yeah he's a little bit of a himbo which made made him really fun to write (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's the fun about writing high fantasy, though. Like, there's just so few rules that you can go with. Like, mm-hmm. you you just have more freedom to say, ah, well, I'm just going to randomly blow this up. Or, you know, we're going to have some meta right here. Like, I love that, that freedom. And that's what I was excited about yours, because it was just like, it's like the nightmare situation for any guy. <laughs> and yeah. it must be. Like, they, they must think, geez, do these women actually just plan this? Yeah. Like, do they sit around and plan how they're gonna, like, freaking just sideswipe us and, like, steal us away or something? Um, <laughs> at least a lot start, of my male yeah. friends think that, so, mm-hmm. yeah. I always, like, when I start 
getting into you know some crazy parts in the story i'm just almost cringing because i just feel like the characters looking up at the heavens like really this is what's happening next you know and that's when i know that i'm on the right track is when uh the character is kind of yelling at the narrator like is this yeah. is, is is this really where we're going um Would so you yeah kinda it, was, like it was a lot of fun <laughs> mm-hmm. if you think about it i always i always love this about being authors it's like we almost put on this little show and these stories and we're technically the puppets but in real mm-hmm. life we're the ones looking up at the sky going really you couldn't have thought of something better than this <laughs> you know like yeah. it's i always think it's like a weird sort of irony like most of the time we're like sitting there wanting to throw our own books across the room and there's probably somebody up above us writing this crazy story that, that oh, we're yeah. all living, you know? Just in life, when I just get, like, 500 tickets on my car for no reason, I'm like, really? This is this is my adventure right now in life? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Or you just randomly stub your toe and you're like, how? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think that's, like, this is our moral story, I think, for all of us writers is we see that. Where it's like a lot of people who maybe aren't as creative as us don't kind of get that multi-level vision that, that we all get and we kind of see the irony and stuff. So Yeah, definitely. Uh, so how how did you get the idea to write this? Where did it come from? Um, I think it came from a couple different places. Uh, I'm the type of writer who kind of has a bunch of stuff going on. Like I'll just open a notebook and just start writing without any idea of what I'm doing. And then, so what happens is I end up with like a bunch of half baked ideas or maybe I have a really good character or a cool setting, but then it's, you know, sometimes it's just lacking. So this story actually came from combining like three different story ideas. (laughs) I had, you know, I had like a boring short story about like a dude hunt and a, and a dog hunting a, a demon. And the thing I liked about it was uh, this idea that he could communicate with the monster. And I thought mm-hmm. that made it kind of interesting. Um, but that's about the only thing that was like interesting about it. And then uh, I had this like started this sort of, it was more of like a grimdark fantasy, but it was pretty typical and then I started adding like Thai history elements into Ooh, it. Yeah. Which, it started getting cool, but something was missing there too. So I didn't get too far on it. And then what was the third one? I swear there was a third one. Oh, I just had some, I, I think the opening scene was from some other random, like sort of Western-y, like typical fantasy setting where a dude gets beat up in a tavern and meets a, a woman who like kind of pulls him into an adventure so it was like a combination of combining all those three um I think one thing I can point to that made me feel like it was something that had legs was seeing um a lot of Rebecca Roanhorse's work um yeah. with the I think Trail of Lightning was a book that had um like a native uh monster hunter basically and that's about the only similarities there because it was like contemporary fiction or or fantasy um but it made me think about it as well as like you know the witcher tv show and games i'm like okay so there's like really cool monsters and thai folklore so then i combined those last three books and kind of came up with the idea for this one it's incredible like how sometimes i did the same as you like, I will buy a notebook randomly. And mm-hmm. My husband freaks out usually because <laughs> I'll, I'll walk around and I'll be like, ah, ha, ha. And then <laughs> he'll be like, you've got like 50 at home. Oh, yeah. But I don't have one right now. You know, you just start writing. And, and I'm I'm terrible. Like, I sit on a plane, something comes to me. I sit on a train, something comes to me. Not as easy in a car, funnily enough. Um, yeah, right. That's when you have but, to get the voice notes out. Yep. And start yeah. Just like, the, the random thing that comes to your brain. But for some reason, in the car, because you've got somebody that you're supposed to communicate with, it's almost like I hit a roadblock. But if uh, I'm in a public transportation situation, I I just ignore everyone, and I'm the the weird person in the corner with the notebook oh, in my yeah. face. Public transit is great for writing. Like, yeah, there were times where I would just not for this story as much, but 
for other stories, I just get on the Metro here in DC and ride it around from one end to the other and just kind of like start drafting madly or like on a train. I've been on a train once and ended up writing a lot. I don't know. It's something about being sort of like transient or something or like yeah, it's the freedom it. of it. And yeah. then it's just gone and you can kind of focus on, you know, what's in your head. So yeah, I really enjoy writing um, in, in transit actually <laughs> on notebooks too. That's like, kind yeah. Of then like, when you get home, you just like hit the computer and it just comes like yeah. it's just flows. Like I'm this, I'm when I was kind of getting really into my Nordic ones, mm-hmm. I couldn't get into that connection with it because I was living in Glasgow at the time and I was struggling. Oh. So I headed back to Shetland to see my mom for like a month, and it just hit me like every piece that I needed for that story just sunk straight in as soon as I was on that ferry. And that ferry is 14 hours, oh. and I have never been grateful for a 14 hour ferry in my life than I was that week. I just I wrote it and then my editor was like where the hell did you come up with all this and I'm like <laughs> I had a 14 hour ferry with no internet and I couldn't game so yeah. you know but mm-hmm. yeah like the islanders are so used to seeing me tucked in the corner of a, the coffee shop and if they see the notepad out they'll not come out to me they'll just leave me alone but if that notepad's closed like I have like just tons of people that will come and, and just annoy the hell out of me so sometimes I just leave it open oh, just yeah. to get that little bit of like peace mm-hmm. and quiet but yeah like those are like I think for us writers even though what we do is such a, a singular thing it's such like a an intimate thing we still need that world buzz around us and people around us and that sort of hyper social activities going on for us to be able to feel connected to the world and really produce something amazing yeah, that's a good point. It definitely helps a lot too. And just getting like more in the background kind of energy or something like that. Yeah. I mean, the hum I, of life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I do it a lot when I'm like coming up with ideas, going and sitting in the park or something like that. Um, when I start getting into a book though and writing, I usually just on my couch with my cats. Uh, <laughs> trying to Been there. That. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The battering them off and because anyone of interrupts me I just you. glare at them like can't you see I'm like it's somewhere I'm in space right now you know trying to get in the mode yeah can you can you wait till I feed you in like an hour's time yeah yeah I've been there <laughs> yeah. I actually had um my cat decided he was not gonna wait longer than 10 minutes for his dinner one time and he actually sat on my keyboard oh uh, yeah yeah my my one of my cats loves it anytime I leave I come back and she's written like three pages of just you know (laughs) random letters yep yeah (laughs) been there actually the worst one that that mine did my youngest Stefano was he actually deleted my entire book really (laughs) and I I freaked I was like I hope this has not saved I hope I can get it back and luckily I got it back but it was like a hundred thousand words I was gonna oh, kill him. That's that's impressive. Like yeah. for the cat to have the, you know ability to figure that out. He was just pawing the keys. Like it was the cutest thing. It was like he was imitating me and he was such a tiny kitten at the time. Oh. <laughs> and I was just like, No, it's hundred thousand words. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> you know, and it mm-hmm. but it's amazing like how just having them around can sometimes make it less lonely and less boring because you just never know what's going to happen oh, at yeah. least yeah for sure so what are what can people be excited about um that you are working on what can they be hungry for for this story um well for for whatever you're working on next oh gotcha for the next story yeah um i'm really stoked about the next story i want to get published i don't have any like actual plans yet for it as far as um you know i have no details to share as as much as that goes but it is in a different genre i'm like a big um sci-fi person actually which is kind of funny that my first novel ended up being fantasy because i mean i love fantasy too but i would say i'm probably like comfortable in the sci-fi world yeah 70 to 80 more percent like a sci-fi fan but I 
um i'm really excited for it because i have like kind of that um sort of a reverent tone in my writing that'll you know if people like the last fee hunter they'll like the next story too um yeah exactly and i think if you've got a reverent style voice it's perfect for sci-fi it can right, really yeah, yeah, transforms yeah. it yeah because it's so funny i i literally got published in romance for years mm-hmm. i couldn't get in <laughs> fantasy was dead when i came around uh-huh. and i was like oh i just want to write fantasy i'm not this romantic chick what the hell and i am apparently according to my close friends a absolute sap a romantic at, at, at heart uh not that i can see it um and it's it's just this this kind of running gag that um i've been writing fantasy on the side for years and and yet i'm constantly asked for romance uh, it's, yeah like i noticed that um i noticed that romanticy especially is like a huge buzzy yeah. like trend kind of right now and it's really popular but i mean i feel like romance is always popular in the industry I think it, it is and if you get stuck books. in there it's a nightmare to get out <laughs> i've heard that too yeah and i i've noticed that my book when i look online at um retailers it sometimes it is shelved as like romanticy but i kind of figure yep. like eh, that's they're just kind of like following a trend right now i just hope that people don't get like disappointed if they're expecting like a very you know romancy sub uh book because it's definitely not like focused yep. on romance um it's a big subplot which kind of i didn't plan for it it just kind of happened but um, <laughs> i mean i i I have never really been able to write romance well, um, but I always like doing like a subplot in the story. I think it makes your characters. It like, does it. It gives the yeah, edge, and it gives the, like it, more people connect to it as well because mm-hmm. the romance industry is billions of dollars a year. Yeah, and I mean the the piece I wrote was just fiction. Like I wrote just a very generic drama about family, and it got shelved as contemporary romance and it has never gotten out of that shelf since. <laughs> and I'm like, oh dear Lord, you guys gonna be more wrong about this. Um, even my readers would come back and say, this really isn't heavy romance. Like, why is it in contemporary romance? And I'm like, I have no clue. <laughs> yeah, That's well, the booksellers, you know? Right, right, totally. Yeah, I think it's hard if you feel like you're getting pigeonholed, especially like, as a debut, I'm like conscious of that. Like, oh, I don't want people to think I only write like Asian inspired fantasy. I don't want to. Yep. <laughs> like, I mean, I love putting, I love making my books like diverse and have underrepresented yeah. characters and, and settings and stuff. But um, it's just, uh, you know, I write all kinds of stuff. So I'm excited to like start putting more of that out when I can. Yeah, I I know that feeling because one of the the things that I did with the indie side is I said to my publisher, if I sign this deal with you, I do not want to write romance for the rest of my life. Like, Mm -hmm. I want to go do other stuff. And she she literally looked at me and she goes, Crystal, you can choose any genre you want. I just want this set number of books a month. This, you know, your edits to be done on time and your your covers to be done. And I looked at her and I said, deal. I said, but I'll hold you to it. And she goes, yeah, but you got to realize is you're going to have multiple pen names. Uh, <laughs> and I was right, like, right. oh, no, because then I'm going to have to try and remember what pen name I've got to be at each of these events. <laughs> right, yeah, because you have to, like, I hate the whole brand thing, but yep. I know that's the thing they think about and ask you about. Like, What's your brand? What's your all? And, like, if you're yep. writing, like, if, if people really love your, you know, uh romance monster romance or something they're gonna be all sad when they open up your like serious like you know yep. women's lit or whatever <laughs> like where's the yeah. monsters what exactly that? that's that's the thing like i learned 12 years ago they, they threw me into romance they said oh this will just wet your feet and mm-hmm. it was only ever supposed to wet my feet next thing i knew 12 years later i was still getting said we want you to continue to write the you know the romance and stuff and I remember just looking at them thinking, I can't keep doing this. Like, I got a stack of stories that I want to go elsewhere with. And uh, I, I laugh because luckily my, my editor, Kimon, over at uh, Taiham Hill Press, she just said, if you want to do something else, you need to take a break from romance. Take a break, girl. 
like write whatever's in your heart and yeah. I could not thank her enough for that that was that was the most amazing thing and she's probably one of the nicest um publishing classes I've ever worked with because she's also let me go off and do screenwriting and stick my toes in other places like just because sometimes as a writer you just need to take that step back and just be like well what else could I do yeah and, totally. and that's what I got to do with her and I'm super grateful for that like beyond words now to be honest yeah, yeah, so is there anything that you're reading right now that you're really excited about that you're like really energetic about um <laughs> I just finished a bunch of books so I'm thinking about what I've read recently um I like I said, I'm a huge sci-fi fan. So I just read all of the Expanse novels in like oh. two months. And I looked, and I'm usually like a really slow reader, actually. And I Same. Yep. looked up and I was like, was it really like two million words? Like, how did that happen? But um, I was a big fan of the show. So I think I was like waiting to read the books because I didn't want it to end. Um, so yeah. I really enjoyed those. Um and that's been kind of like living in my head rent free. Um, I just read, uh, what was it called? Oh, The Free People's Village by Sim Kern. Oh, which I really okay. liked. Yeah. It's very like punk rock, like activist heavy kind of, um, yep. you know, cool stuff there. I, I enjoyed that. Uh, and what was, what else? I just started The Terraformers, which is by Annalie Newitz, I believe. All right, really yeah. cool. Um, I like all their stuff. Have uh, you tried the book eaters yet? That's just come out. I have read the book eaters. Sunny Dean. Yeah, um, I had cool. her on the show. It was incredible. I, 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 I'm not a harder person at all, and she did not tell me I was hard. And uh, no hints about it at all. She's just like, it's got vampires in it. So I was like, oh, okay. I can do vampires. <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah. Five minutes in what the hell am I reading? I, I loved it. I thought it was like dark and weird, you know? And it like, was I definitely like, dark and yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I love uh, high concept books like that where you're like, how is that going to work? And then you're like, oh, that works. Like I read, um, what's the name of it? God, I should have been ready. Uh, the Chain Gang All-Stars. Um, oh, I should have written down the author's name. Um, I could come back to it. But uh yeah it had this really high concept kind of uh, prisoners um, being forced to like be in this big entertainment industry where they like fought to the death and stuff. Um, And it was very like uh, satirical kind of, I mean, it was really like making commentary on, you know, the prison industrial complex in America and all this, you know, kind of heavy stuff. It was pretty heavy, you know, but um, that book, I think it came out last year really impressed me um but see, see I had the same feeling because I'm a gamer at heart totally yeah, a gamer at heart and so when Warcraft came out I was like I'm a League of Legends player so 100% and I was just like oh god this is gonna no don't touch League like I knew she was a League player too and I'm like oh no don't no no this is gonna be awful I read it so quick I was just like I was so impressed by it because I'm not somebody that's usually into that kind of feel, Mm -hmm. but I got so into it. And like, I have gamer friends who don't read at all. who like picked up Marie Lou's book and they were just like sucked into that entire thing. They were like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And yeah, like it was like the first time I got other gamers to be like excited about books was just, just with that one. And now I'm working my way through the very last book of the Throne of Glass series, which is extremely high fae. And I, I kind of put it off because I wanted to make sure the series was done. You know, that oh, way where you like, yeah. you're like... a monster series, isn't it? Yeah, it's monsters. Like eight books, but like, each one's like a thousand pages. And I'm like, ah, oh. like, <laughs> because you've got edits to do in like the meantime of that. And you can only read so much in a day. Yeah, totally. That, I was just like, I gotta, I gotta do this. Like, I'm in fourth year university, and it's my last year, but I'm like, I am finishing this book. Like, it's gotta get done. Right, yeah. I liked, um, I'm a big gamer, too. I liked uh, Arcane. Was that, that was League of Legends, right? Yeah, that was our League of Legends. Yeah, Arcane was amazing. I thought when it came out, it was a really good job of, like, writing yeah. that and 
and it was it was beautiful too. <laughs> I I'm I'm sort of sad that they didn't do season two though. I must oh did they that. cancel it? Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. It would have been awesome, especially like because I I played League, you know, coming on eight nine years, and that game is addictive. If you don't want to get addicted to anything, just don't play League. It's definitely <laughs> like a trap. You walk in for yeah, one game yeah, and you're there for four I hours. I tried it yeah. once and I was miserable at it. So I'm I'm definitely more of like an RPG person. Um, yep. There like people have been getting me that down that road too. They just yeah. Like, yeah. Like Baldur's Gate was really great. Um, I know that just like hit the mainstream hard yep. in a way that most CRPGs don't, which that was really cool to see. Um. And now you got Pal World too, which is kind of coming out and it's just <laughs> yeah. blowing up. Pokemon it's with like, guns, like gangster yeah, Pokemon. it's like what the hell is this? I tried it. It. I just uh, the games that are more like grindy, where I'm yep. like uh, I gotta collect all this crap to like make a basket, and you know that that stuff kind of gets a little bit boring for me. It but does I love a bit, the yeah. I'm here yeah. for the memes for Pal World for sure. <laughs> yeah definitely well we'll have to get you introduced to ddg because that that place is amazing it's like the one place i can go on the like discord and i go in there and it's it's just calm and quiet and it's just yeah it's it's so good mm. um and we just do like we do warhammer in there we've got like dungeons and dragons it's just a phenomenal place to be if you're oh, a cool. gamer mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i i don't promote them too much but I know the two that have like brought it over, and it's it's such a a relaxing Discord to be in now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's always great to find like a good community that you connect with. I feel like I join a lot of Discords now for various yeah. things, and I'm just like, oh man, it's gonna take a while. Oh, I gotta lurk all these channels and get the vibe and start conversations. But I mean, there's a few that I I think I look at more than others. I don't know um oh we'll have to we'll have to send you out because like i i run valhalla which is our nordic fair like fey kind of place that we we do sort of like minecraft stuff and we've got all these different oh, games cool. people partake in and it, it's yeah. so good it's like it's just such a calm chilled place i love and we actually share a lot of this stuff yeah we share mm-hmm. a lot of stuff too so yeah you're more than welcome because like i think that's the thing now others of like who are gamers are all kind of clunking together and it's making a much better community and it's much like it's more welcoming and stuff too. That's great. Well, you survived the book and life podcast for today. How was that? <laughs> was that not like the least painful thing of all? <laughs> no, it was great. I had a great time. So guys, uh, you're only going to come back next week because we have another amazing guest coming on and uh, you're not going to want to miss it. So be safe. Remember to take breaks and please do not clean your gun while you listen to the show. And I will see you all again next time. Bye.